The road from Nicetown, Pennsylvania to Canton, Ohio is just under 400 miles. Jari Evans chose to take the scenic route. Who dat everybody, St. John Butler here, writer for the Canal Street Chronicles and creator of the Life of a Saint series. Today we're talking about the greatest guard who ever donned the black and gold, Mr. Jowry Evans himself. And we're gonna ask him three questions. For my first question, I decided to ask him, what was the toughest part about making it to the NFL? What kind of adversity did he go through and where did he see the toughest obstacle? As far as adversity, I mean, coming up from Nice Town, that's all you know. Inner city, that's all you know. You know, if you're from the city, that's that's what you know. You just, you, you, you don't know anything else. So, I mean, that adversity is itself, but sometimes it's not really looked at as adversity when you're that young. It's looked at as, as your environment, and you, you navigate it, and, and that's what makes you who you are today. So, right. other than the injury adversity and, and, you know, playbook or whatever it may be, you know, I didn't really... See it as adversity. It was all just a learning, learning tool to prepare me for challenges ahead. Now they say the timing is everything. So my second question for Jari, I asked him what it was like coming to the Saints in 2006. Now they had just come off of Hurricane Katrina, a tough road to get back into the dome. His first game in the NFL is that return to the dome game. So what it was like as a rookie experiencing that. It was awesome. Um, after freaking the longest training camp in NFL history, <laughs> uh, there in Jackson, <laughs> and playing, uh, you know, a few games at Jackson State Stadium, you know, getting in the dome was uh, was amazing, and just everything around it from the fans and the coverage and and uh, what we were able to accomplish. I think it was like week three. Yep. Played two of yeah. the games that came home. I just know that, you know, we went into this game knowing that we were not going to lose this game. Um, everybody was extremely alert, understanding what it meant, not just for us, but for the fans. You know, obviously for us because it's Atlanta in the division, but for the fans and everybody in the region. And um, just preparing for that game during the week, putting in the different plays and, and watching Coach Bondo and Coach Matt, you know, Tell Gleason, like, listen, this is what we got on this long snap. When you're going to freaking come through here and block this punt. Because as a rookie, I had to sit in all those meetings. <laughs> all the special teams meetings. I was only on field goal pro, but they made all the rookies these days on special teams meetings. So, you know, just to, to see that and, and watch that come into fruition and and uh, go out there and, and be able to contain Michael Vick, who was one of the most electrifying guys to ever play the game. And, um, you know, growing up watching him and now, you know, I'm watching my defense corral him and keep him, you know, from doing what he likes to do. And coming out there for a win after Katrina, it was um awesome experience. And, uh, you know, it was a great way to kind of start, start us all off with our first game in the Dome. Now, hopefully you're enjoying the content. And if you are, maybe you'll give it a like. And um, if you're not, then... Give it a like anyway. I don't, I don't know. And before we get on to question three, I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up. There's another show that I love watching, Under the Dome podcast. Alan Ulrich, Sean Williams, Bob Rose do a great job breaking it down every week. Uh, a lot of laughs, a lot of good times. They're interactive with the chat. You should guys should definitely go check them out. I'm going to leave the link for their show in the description below. And while I got you, I have also sold out. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. It's true. Uh, I am officially an affiliate for Playbook Products. Now, Playbook Products has some pretty interesting and unique collectible stuff. They engrave all of your favorite plays, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, or something else. They take these plays and they engrave them onto things like slate coasters, leather coasters, ceramic mugs, posters, infant body suits like onesies, drawstring bags, iPhone cases, face masks. I also got some information that t-shirts are on the way, which will be a great seller. So go check them out. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below and tell me these aren't some of the coolest collectibles you've seen. So for the third question I had to ask him, 
What was it about that 2009 team that was so different from every other year he played with the Saints? You know, it was um, it was just a work ethic. You know, being, having what we went through the, the previous three years and training camps and and seeing how we were building this machine and, and what the ultimate goal was to win a championship and getting the right players in here to, to fit our mold, whether it was free agency or drafting, you know, getting the guys around Drew so he can do what he does best, you know, getting a guy like Meacham, one of the fastest guys, big and strong and fast, which we did in Washington uh, throughout the season, and then you Ray and Lance and then Colson, who, who, you know, all we, you know, just to see how the team was built and then bringing in Shockey and then just adding those pieces and Goody and things of that nature, getting to that and then starting off with, you know, winning 13 in a row, it was, it was, it was wild. Um, we, the, the training camp was extremely difficult with the defenses and what they were doing and, and how, they were really how Greg Williams had them really focusing on getting the ball back into the offense hands, and and that's why we had a lot of success. We were able to gain one or two possessions a game and allow our high powered offense to drive down the field and, and dictate and dictate the game. And um, and we always and, and I just remember on the just we could be down or we can need three or you know, one or seven and just be like the defense is going to get the ball back, and they did. They did. And when our number was called, go down there and get it. And uh, that was the mentality that we had. You know, the defense would say, hey, we're going to get the ball back. And shoot, when they got the ball back, we had the answer. You know, we, we, we really kept <laughs> we kept each other accountable. And when we needed to lean on one side of the ball, even special teams, we needed to lean on them to do their job. Everybody did their job. And, um, and the coaches did a great job in preparing us and bringing in different speakers at different times to deliver that uh, that everybody can relate to of, of inspiring us to do great things. And we were able to, uh, so, you know, not only win 13 games in a row, but, you know, losing the last three games of the season, hearing all the doubters, nobody's won a Super Bowl since this, 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 since they lost three games, and, and being able to just reset and turn it back on again, um, it was awesome. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, interview with Jari Evans. Jari, if you're watching this, just know when you're in Canton, I'm in Canton. I'll see you next time. Hoot out, everybody.